A warm good evening. Welcome to it. It's time for Extra Time. I'm your jersey number 10, Thomas Mlambo. And the show we've got in store for you today has everything you want when it comes to the DSTV Premiership. We see a new man joining the top of the uh, top goal scorer charts uh, with uh, Seho Fato Mabasa doing that over the weekend with a hat-trick. And then what happened in some of the other discussion points at the bottom of the table. You find a situation where Richard Bay uh, breathed life into their survival. There is a big discussion point there. Chipper United coming up with a result that many didn't see coming against Kai the Chiefs, uh, that is something that needs lots of unpacking as well. Mami Lodi Sundowns changing 11 players, a completely different squad from the one that played against Younger and still coming away with the points. Uh, that's just the tip of the iceberg here in studio. To give you a sense of all those stories and give you their perspectives, it's first and foremost, the former Mami Lodi Sundowns and Bafana International, it's Matthew Booth. Matthew, good? Yeah, all good. Looking forward to it? Absolutely. You ready? Yeah. All right, and then Pumudo Manenje, the bold and the beautiful, sits in the middle with the uh, analytical eye and at the far post. I know you are having big conversations on social media, and you want to tonight, Ace. You're saying tonight you want to talk about the Sundowns goal uh, or the younger goal that wasn't given. That's what you want to do? You're going to bring us a perspective? You're going to share some insights? Yeah, we, we must lay to rest the argument. You're going to do that today? People must not argue. Ace. People must just sit back comfortable on their couches, uh. watch extra time, and will kill the argument. Can I tell you that on social media, no one has managed to do what you are saying you are going to be able to do tonight? We're going to do something magical. We're going to recreate that moment uh. and we'll prove whether or not the decision of the referee to uh, disallow the goal uh. was the correct decision. On the far post here, Matthew Booth is smiling already saying, uh, what are you saying? Why am I looking at a smile, Matt? No, no I'm just, I can't wait. <laughs> Let's get straight into the 30 seconds moment, uh, the uh, 30 second strike. This is where the guys give their perspectives on something that caught their eye, something that impressed them. And I'm going to start out. And this week, I actually didn't see your moments before. So this is going to be purely random. It's pure guessing. It's not going to be based on whose moment I think is really the best. But I'm going to use previous experience. Matt, you get to go first. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's an unmanded compliment. <laughs> Um, yeah, so this is, I chose something a little bit different, you know, uh -huh. we, had, we had some serious um, sort of inclement weather and uh, this is uh, a dedication to the people who we perhaps take for granted at wow. some, some stages. Um, there we go, those are the guys that bring us uh, our pictures, the medics as well getting a battering um, over, over the last couple of days in the rain in their waterproofs and here was a little bit of a funny moment where the ball boy <laughs> came to help out. I like that moment. Yeah. Credit to the guys who do the business, who do the work. And then, Pomozo, what is your 30 second strike this week? It has to be a hat trick. It doesn't happen a lot. So, the bold moment of the week goes to Tsekho Faso Mabasa. I think uh, good anticipation. Uh, he's a predator, a sniper in the box. Uh, gets the first goal, opens up um, the floor. It was raining goals in, in Orlando. He gets the second goal. Good um, assist coming from um, Livito in that moment. Livito says, I'm not stopping there. I'm going to continue. And that those three goals that he scores makes sure that he's joined top goal scorer in the GSTV Prem with 10 goals in the league to go together with the 13, uh, with the 13 goals in all competition. Excellent week for Mavasa. Not bad. Not a bad choice. Not a very bad choice at all in terms of uh, whether that is the 32nd strike of the week. And you can tell us on hashtag SSDSKI what you think so far. Emotionally, I'm with you, man. Emotionally, yeah. I'm with you. Hat trick is big, so you can't go anywhere else. Ace, where are you leaning so far? I'm touched by uh, Matthew's <laughs> choice, you know. He's got something. <laughs> yeah, but, but for a player who's gone so close on so many different occasions uh. to achieve that hat trick, I'm conflicted. I'm conflicted. I love what Matthew chose because it, it shows the human element of, of you know, the behind the scenes, uh, what we bring to uh, the viewers mm. on, on live television and the sacrifices that our people make. But I'm conflicted. Now, here comes the 30 second strike of the week that I have chosen. And when you come in and replace Stanley Nwabali, the Nigerian number one goalkeeper, and your name is Darren Johnson, and you are on debut, and it's up against Kaiser Chiefs in a must-win encounter when your team are trying to get away from the relegation zone, and you come up with two saves like these to make sure that your team walks away with all of the points on debut, Darren Johnson. Oh, come on, guys, come on. He's done the job. 
when no one expected that he could do the job. Ace, change your vote. I've, I, no, one, you, no one expected. No, on debut. You're a, you're a goalkeeper. Your, jo your job is to stay. Hey, forward. that's when we think it was a deca deca. You know, it's okay, boy. Today you let one in, it's fine. We don't expect a clean sheet against Kaiser Chiefs mm. and two unbelievable stops. Mm. No, I think uh, given also the conditions of the pitch, ah. you know, it had rained in East London the entire night and, and during the match as well. It was trickier, in fact, mm. for the goalkeepers than it was for the uh, uh, players. So Nami. So, hey, today. Mm. Hi, my daughter and yours. <laughs> you, you guys have chosen the best. Uh, let, let's let's allow the viewers to choose. I can't. Absolutely. Let's I can't judge this one. But I need to move on with the moments that the guys want to talk about. And let's go first and foremost to what happened in the midweek. And we'll start there. Kaiser Chiefs up against Stellenbosch. The build-up towards what happened against Chipper United. And we're starting to see signs in that midweek performance against Stellies that you know, it may not be that easy over the weekend. And we start out here looking at how it was that Stelis did eventually get all three of the points for Muslim. I think they do have the numerical advantage behind the ball, Keza Chiefs, but the defense is not taking away space and time from the opponent. And for me, that's where the, the, the problem is, is for Keza Chiefs. They rotate the ball, uh, uh, that is Stelis. But if you look at the, at the lines for Keza Chiefs, you can clearly see um, the 4 for 2 diamond that Keza Chiefs has because you can see the lines of four, four defense, four midfielders. But for me, that inch perfect ball that comes from Van Royen, the excellent run on the shoulder of the last defender from Titus. And I thought that Keza Chiefs took it for granted. They, they had the men around the ball, but they don't take away space and time, and he punishes them. An excellent run on the, on the shoulder of the last defense. Any blame that can be apportioned here? Shanti, Edmilson, or Vuma, or is that just unstoppable? Lanti was probably the best Chiefs player on the park. Uh, here, he just needs cover from uh, Dove. Mm. I mean, that's 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 what you do in a back four. You've got to cover in your full backs. You've got to get your spacing right. In this case, they were a little bit sluggish, particularly Dove, to get out to the left mm. to cover that, that cross. Now, one of the things that was said in the post-match interviews is when Steadies are 1-0 up, that is when they are the most dangerous because the second goal is most likely by virtue of their counter-attacking style. And we see that here. We look at how it is, especially towards the dying moments, Chiefs have to throw things forward, and here come the counters. Yeah. Score could have been bigger. This is a very strong characteristic of the team, you know, when you profile them. And they haven't, they haven't let that go. I think this season they probably have rotated a little bit more, especially when De Jong is in the team. He slows mm. the game down a little bit for them, uh, and a little bit more um, unpredictable in when they do launch that uh, counter, but when you've got the likes of Reynas and Van Veik and Oji, you know, on the bench, um, you're always going to have players who are going to like to break very quickly. Another look at it here, on the counter, they push forward, spectacular finish in the end, but again, the danger of being one down against Stelis, clearly illustrated. It also speaks about the trust that uh, Stevie Barker has on his team, because um, you know Van, Van Veik is going to come off the bench, Mugaga is going to come off the bench and that's how he's trying to manage the, the game and he's trying to manage the game with continuation of domination of ball position, trying to play on transition and on break attack and that's something that they do very well, mm. uh, that is the Stelis team. Yes, Keza Chiefs are trying to get one back, it means the gaps will open up in that midfield and that's where Stelis can use the pace. Now, Chipa was the next opponent for Kaiser Chiefs on the Saturday and they already showed midweek in a critical game. I mean, it was a big game against Cape Town Spurs given the fact that there were those who were talking about Chippa as being potentially drawn into the relegation battle. This is a huge game for, for Cape Town Spurs. Um, and um, yeah, to, to lose that uh, game... Um, they lost 2-0. 2-0 um, was a big, big setback for them, uh, considering the, the Swallows result as well. Mm. Uh, coming out of that, you know, you wanted... Uh, Ernst, I'm sure, wanted um, some sort of um, answer, um, some sort of performance to show what sort of character they have, um, but unfortunately it wasn't to be. And then that goal there scored by Kwaiba, mm. who's going to be extremely important in the weekend encounter that Chiefs have against Chippa United. Yeah, in the last two games that he has played for Chippa, he has gotten two goals for them. Mm. But one thing that will make Tavo September and Ko uh, happy is that they've kept two clean sheets in the last two games. 
and also four goals that they scored in the last two games. So they've got an eye for goal. They've got an Ivanga that is getting his match sharpness. He does. He has the ability to hold up the ball and bring the midfielders into play. Also deadly in the air. If mm. if you are not going to be gangly and harass him, he's dangerous in the air. Ace, when we go to Buffalo City, full house, full, not a seat in the house on the treacherous conditions that were experienced in the Eastern Cape. What a day for football. No, look, I'm happy for the people of uh, the Eastern Cape mm. broadly, but also, you know, the people in Buffalo City. I mean, they haven't had uh, a professional football there since uh, Sisa Dugashe was shut mm. down. Um, and I mean, when last did we have a professional match there before uh, Chiba played Cape Town City and then in the Netbank Cup uh, uh, played FC Ravens. And, and what's better than bringing one of the most followed, followed mm. clubs in the country to uh, rural Eastern Cape? And, and you could see how people embraced that. It was a beautiful, beautiful scene. Uh, to see. And the reason I threw it to Ace is he's from the Eastern Cape. That's hometown, that's his territory. And when they fill up like that, we don't hear the end of it when he walks in the studio. Did you see? It was amazing. You see the Eastern Cape, it's the home of football, right? Anyway, let's move on because then Chiefs make seven changes in Kevin Johnson for this one. And he said before at the end of the last encounter where they'd gone down against Sellies that he was going to make changes, but seven of them. Yeah, he had to get a reaction. Uh, but nevertheless, that was. Um you know, quite drastic from, from his part. And you, you, you either sending a message and that message gets through, mm. or it has a bit of a negative effect on the team because you lack consistency. Here really from the flick on should have done better. And then also from the second ball as well. Um, pretty poor defending. Kwaiba actually poor defending from who? Uh Simango, Novo, uh, and Dove. Um, Dove not getting any contact in that, in that flick, flick on, letting Shabalala get a get a easy flick on to the back. Vuma as well, I think, was a little bit sluggish with his feet. Where I think Johnson did well on that heavy ground was that he commanded his his area at very quick light feet across the across the box. Whereas in that instance, Vuma was a bit sluggish. The danger continued as Chipa United once they were one up. Look at the pass here for Gonobe. That is a killer pass to get the goal scorer Evan Gaa away. Yeah, let's also give credit to Evan Gaa. The way he opens up his body, allows the pass to go to him. He allows the ball to run across him. His first touch sets himself up. He one touch is already uh, progressing forward, but I thought he could have done better. Um, Kongo were also excellent in that eighth role. Um, look at how Ivanga opens up his body, uh, stays on side, delays his run, but he should be going across the goalkeeper. He's going for that near post. He's going for power rather than placement, and mm. that's why he misses the opportunity. But Vumad also does well because he stays on his feet for as long as possible, makes it difficult for Ivanga to get it. Rumor uh, has it that, he, that they're still looking for that ball. Uh, from uh, <laughs> Rumor is it? <laughs> they're still looking for that ball. <laughs> um, but 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 a great a great um, a great move going forward. You know, attacking options as well from mm. them. Um, and I think you know the Chiefs are very good starters. Um, you know, I think those first two goals um, that Chippa scored, we haven't seen the second one yet, um, were their first two shots on target. But, but uh, Matthew, uh, Thomas, you asked the question to say, you make seven, seven changes. Mm. If you make seven changes, that's why you don't have the cohesion. Uh, that's why you don't have the understanding, the chemistry between the players. You mm. need the understanding. When one jumps, you know definitely that you're going to get the cover. But you won't get that if you keep chopping and changing your team. And that's the problem. At the moment at Kaiser Chiefs, is if the results don't go well, they change the personnel instead of fixing the tactics uh, on the day. What I think also didn't uh, go their way was that both Solomons and Nobo, both two defenders in their back four, picked up yellow cards within mm. the first 10 minutes. And on this field, you could see the two goals that Chipper scored. The, the Kaiser Chiefs defense was then very standoffish. You know, instead of being aggressive, mm. wanting the contact, etc. Kwaiba here was a man you guys mentioned midweek. There's the first of the opportunity. Vuma does brilliantly to make sure that that doesn't find the back of the net. But then he becomes unstoppable here. Kongobe making the ground up. There's Kongobe and the finish. I wouldn't use the word unstoppable. There's no pressure on the ball. There's lack of pressure. Um, they don't take away space and time, Kaiser Chiefs. It's like more or less, it's, it's, it's shadow marking because you, no one is putting in a foot, mm. right, and intercept. No one is getting a little bit physical to get the, the, the strikers off balance. Everybody's standing off. 
Everybody's standing off. And in this moment, you're thinking Kaiser Chiefs should be able to deal with this. They backtrack at all times. There's no point where they are pressing and trying to take away space and time. And that's how they concede the goal. Again, the chemistry is not there. Goals are scored, Thomas, because of lack of tracking, lack of pressure on the men of the ball. And we see that happening with the goal that Chipa scores. Mm. It's not about the personnel, it's about the coach grinding it in. Instead of swapping the players, you need to fix the tactics. Now, there's a moment here that you would have missed. Those of you that are keen, I might have seen it. On that goal that was just scored there by uh, Kwaiba, in the beginning of the movement, I want you to keep an eye on Goodman Musele. Because either he's a Sangoma and he's able to know that it's <laughs> going to be a goal long ahead, or you guys can give me an explanation for what happens here. Take a look at this goal again, and we will highlight to you Goodman Musele. Number 20, look what happens as his team comes out of defense. Passes, and then he celebrates. They're, they're gonna go and score, but he's already celebrating at that stage. It's, it's what you do during video analysis. When it's video analysis time, you go to the uh, analysis room and you say, Keza Chiefs press in this certain way. If you are able to come out of that press, it means you are cleared goal, it's, it's 1v1. So Goodman Musella already knows, mm. guys, if, if we can come out of here, it's 1v1. And as soon as they go out, he's celebrating because he knows that it's 1v1. We stand a chance to score a goal, Matthew. Yeah, and I think that, that area, the, the way that they played out started with Modisi. And I think um, he's a player that we haven't really uh, spoken about a lot. Mm. Um, the most crosses in the game, um, very good on the ball. He gets forward um, a lot. and. He's been probably one of their most consistent performance um, um, in, that, in that squad. Guys, we have to speak about it, and we haven't so far, but how big of an impact would the murder of Luke Fleurs have had on this Kaiser Chiefs team in getting ready for this encounter and how the game turned out? It's very, it's very difficult to know what was said within the squad. You know, if the leaders in the team said, let's play on the emotion, let's play for Luke, mm. that could have been an option. And then you go forth and you, and you play for him. You know, you use that emotion. Mm. That could be an option. The second option, uh, which in hindsight, now that they've lost, <laughs> perhaps people will be, will be now saying, no, it was too soon, etc. Et mm. It's very easy to say. Hindsight is a, very, is a fantastic thing. You could say, okay, no, let's respect the process. Uh, I'm sure the PSL would have granted that um, reprieve mm. um, and you mourn him. Um, so there's those two options, but we will never know, you know what was said in the team meetings building up to the game. And to the family and the teammates and to Kaiser Chiefs and everyone in you, Luke Fleurs, our deepest condolences from every single one of us at Supersport and here on Extra Time for the tragic, tragic death of such a young and exciting talent in South African football. I know you wanted to get in on the conversation. I saw you uh, give me a little bit of a signal. No, it, it, it's for me, really, it's about uh, condolences to Luke Flores and, uh, and the death. You know, it was tragic. And I'm thinking that when you look at the case of Chiefs, they've lost a teammate, a, a friend and a brother. But for me, it, it's about case of Chiefs. You, you need to go a little bit deeper, Thomas. Mm. Uh, you have to look at case of Chiefs has played eight games in 2024, mm. eight games. In the eight games that they've played, they've only scored three goals. In the, in the, in the eight games that they've played, they've only won one game. Mm. In the eight games that they've played, it's, it's four clean sheets for Vuma. If Vuma is not on the day on his toes, it seems like trouble for Kaiser Chiefs. Mm. So you will also, yes, the death had an uh, effect on, on, on the last result that we're speaking about. But eight games, one win, three goals scored in eight games, they have to do better. Moving on to what happened as far as uh, Skokuni United and Cape Town City were concerned. And this is big because even the DSTV Premiership uh, Player of the Month and Coach of the Month awards will come from Skokuni. The performances they've shown in the last month have been nothing short of sensational. Cape Town City on this occasion were on the receiving end of another terrific performance from Skokuni as they fought back from one down. Yeah, Luke Fleur is actually coming from the Fishhook area, born in Mitchell's Plain, but played in Fishhook uh, under Ubuntu as well, and Jody Lee Ashin as well, mm. also from Fishhook. So a very, very proud moment um, for him to get on the score sheet. Here, Cupido makes that mistake, which then affected his second game, which we saw, mm. um, you know, with the red card, uh, which we'll see a little bit later, making that little error. But um, Tom <laughs> really has been fantastic, winning Player of the Month uh, for February and March, five games playing uh, virtually all of those minutes, Three goals, two assists. Mm. 
Ndambo is the DSTV Premiership Player of the Month. His coach, Siema, is the coach of the month. That is an illustration of what is going on there. But what, what's the secret? What, what's happening at Skokuni that they can go five games in a row with five victories in a row and then now this draw against Cape Town City? I think we see maturity from Osiema. Um, his calmness on the bench, mm. he has got good energy that is, is rubbing off his players. He's a coach that is not scared anymore to try things. Against Orlando Pirates, they go with uh, three up front and all three are false nines, you know. Uh, he has got plan B where he can bring, you know, ease or hold up the balls mm. and bring the midfielders into play. Linda Mtambo has been excellent. It shows a lot of mental strength because he's, he's somebody that was out for a long time mm. with, with a long-term injury. But he comes back, he grinds for this team. His leadership qualities has been excellent for them. I think you can also go a little bit further back, you know, the foundation that was set by Kadosa Juma. Juma then leaves, they bring in Yamba. Mm. You know, good um, player sourcing. Mohocho coming back, mm. you know, mani managing to get to retain him, to get him was a major coup. Although he, although he took some time to, to, to settle. Uh, another one was obviously Mtambo, mm. you know, coming in and doing the business. All right. Ace, you've got a ball set up here on the set. You've done some things for us. You're saying this is going to be the explanation that everyone in Africa has been waiting for. The ball crosses the line. Did it cross the line? Younger versus Mami Lodi Sundowns. Ace Mama wants to talk about that after this, and he's got demonstration equipment. I can't wait. This is going to be good. Stay with Extra Time. We're on Extra Time. We're going to be talking about Mami Lodi Sundowns and how they played against Richard Bay very shortly, but there's been big talk, Ace, and you want to get into this conversation. I want to get into this conversation with you. You've brought uh, show and tell for us here. And let's just get a sense of what happened. In the Cap, Confeder uh, Cap Champions League, Younger have an unbelievable shot, hits the crossbar, it goes in, it doesn't go in, VAR is able to help the referee as to whether the ball has crossed the line or not, and the whole of Africa then had their own lines and they were doing their own diagrams to say the ball crossed the line, it didn't cross the line. Ace, what can you tell us that has not been discussed already? No, look, <clears throat> optical illusion, uh. that's the term. Because if you look at that ball from an angle which doesn't tell you whether or not it's crossed the line, mm. you might very well be convinced that it has crossed the line. Now we've got a ball here mm. and we've got this line here as our goal line where the ball is. So the ball It's been kicked from the direction of Matthew, this side. Mm. Yeah. Towards goal, it strikes so the, line behind the cross the ball. bar. It strikes the crossbar yeah. and then strikes on the ground. Mm. And from the wide shot, you will think that it has gone over the line. I can tell you that from my angle. But let, let's, sh let's show the angle where you would be sitting. From my and, angle. And the angle that was shown on live television. So from my well, angle, let's, that ball let's is start from the line. inside the goalposts, mm. from behind the line. That's what you see from behind the line. And then we'll see when we go above the ball mm. and you look at it from the side where the center of the field is. You can see a clear uh, daylight between the ball and the line. But when you take a camera from the side, when you take a camera from the side, you can actually see that a huge portion of the ball is above the line. That's optical illusion. And the only camera that matters is the camera that is in line with the goal and line. And if it's above the line, what's the rule? Like in this situation, you can see there's a big gap on the ground. That ball looks like it's crossed the line. On the ground, if you look, there's a gap, it's crossed the line. But the entire ball, if you go up. The whole circumference of the ball yeah. must be over the line for a goal to stand. As long as there is a portion of the ball mm. that is still above the line, no matter how minute that portion is, it is not a goal. Was that the situation though? Because the, the situation was that they couldn't tell via VAR, right? VAR could not assess whether the ball had crossed or not. I'm glad you're raising that point, uh, Thomas, because people think that VAR is there to uh, uh, give a decision mm. for and on behalf of the referee. That is incorrect. The person who gives the first decision is the referee. Mm. It's called the on-field decision. And the on-field decision was that this is a no-go. Mm. Now, 
because it's a goal, no goal situation, VAR must then come in and say, you made an obvious error yes. as a referee not to award the goal. VAR sits there, the only angle they have is the one that gives an optical illusion. They can't tell. VAR, VAR know, they, they know inside there that this angle is not a conclusive angle mm. for us to say to the referee, this is an obvious error of judgment on your part. And if there's an obvious error of judgment, you tell the referee and the decision is overturned. If you don't have conclusive evidence, then the on-field decision stays. And that's what happened and that's what's going to stay. No amount of crying or writing letters or anything is going to change that. That was not a goal. And <laughs> That kills the argument. Well, I can tell you, younger have written a letter, so we'll see <laughs> what happens there. But let's move on to Mamidori Sundowns, Richards Bay, where Sundowns starting lineup would be amazing to anybody who knows the Sundowns lineup on a regular basis. Over the weekend prior, they played against Younger. None of the players who played in Tanzania were in the starting lineup for this match against Richards Bay. This starting lineup is unbelievable. Yeah, it's, it's post Christmas, post uh, Afcon. Uh, a lot of these, a lot of the Sundowns players played at Afcon, so uh, they need to rotate now. Thomas, it's as simple as that. Rotation. Great I, to see. All eleven. Great to see. Absolutely, and that—that's the, the little targets that um, Rulani uh, demands from his team to adhere to would be something similar. He would—he would challenge them. He would say to them, guys. I know that I've put you in a bit of trouble with mm. this rotation. Completely new team. But what are you going to do about it? You know, he, he's, he will challenge them. And although they scored very late on in the game, mm. this is actually a fantastic performance against the Richards Bay team who are down at the bottom and uh, are desperate. And for, you have to give credit okay. to Richards Bay yeah, for Mozart. Mm. They hung on, held on, and had unbelievable discipline for 93 and a half minutes of this game critical phase of the game, you're starting to think uh, we have managed to, to take a point away from home against the champions, it is good enough. Magula still has to make a save, he still has to go down and parry the ball mm. around the, the goalpost. He does that so well in, in that moment and they are thinking, they are showing re resilience, that is uh, the defence, they are working as a unit but they lose concentration in the critical phase of the game with less than a minute left on the clock. And when you do that against the champions, it's not over until uh, the final whistle goes. I mean, look at this. Take a look at the clock. Richards Bay would have felt a point away from home was uh, within their grasp against the team that's at the top of the DSTV Premiership. Look at that. There's literally a minute and a half left on the clock. The discipline seems to be there. The defensive lines are there again. Yeah, you, you keep knocking on the door, nobody opens, and uh, eventually you've got to smash the window, you know? And um, Kulisi here gets it out wide. He does something that Sundowns, that you very rarely see Sundowns attempt to do, and that's to cross from that area of the field directly into the box. And you would never have thought that a guy like Mendieta would have been able to have outjumped mm. uh, two tall centre backs, and he does superbly here, catching everybody by surprise, surprise, surprise. Little guy gets up like a big guy there, does Mendieta clinical header. You speak about players that are, have the ability to find spaces in between the lines, um, the ability to find spaces in the pocket, but let's take nothing away. I, I felt that mm. the delivery from Kuli is excellent, mm. it's not even out wide hugging the line, but what happens is they don't take away space and time. Mm. He has got all the time to control the ball, lift up his head and see who's in the box, but Mandieta takes his goal very well. I'm sure Coach Rulani is happy with the depth that he has in his squad. Well taken goal, maximum points for the champions. Ace Lungesa. There are those who are saying, Ace, look at it closely. Look at that goal closely. What did you see? Let's go straight to the footage, mm. uh, Thomas, uh, because I love this uh, highly educational, uh, highly educational incident. Now, you, you have a situation there where the, there's a, a celebration, and the celebration comes from that moment. Look at the ball has already left the foot, mm. but Mendieta is way inside. A lot of people looked at the moment when he received the ball and thought that the assistant referee would have lifted his flag, but no, 
it's not judged at the moment he receives the ball, it's judged at the moment the ball is last touched by mm. a teammate. And at that moment, it was well within the offside. Brilliant decision by the assistant referee. We've seen many of them mm. being flagged for offside, and maybe we're going to see one of them tonight, <laughs> uh, where the player is well in, within the offside line, mm. and yet the flag comes up. In this particular one, spot on decision by the assistant referee. I'm going to stay with you because Sanele Barnes picks up a yellow card here that people want you to look at and give us your perspective on. Yeah, let's go straight to that incident again so that uh, we, we can educate. Uh, he, he loses his footing, right? The, re penalty. the referee is there. Uh, he realizes that he has lost control of the ball. He has lost possession. The move that he wanted to create didn't materialize and he decides uh, to take a dive. So the referee has a look at that. He is the one that's actually pushing against the defender, mm. takes the dive, tries to fool the referee into thinking that he has been fouled. Correct decision by the referee to award a, a, a free kick there and to show me a yellow card for simulation. There's a striker behavior. here. There's a striker in amongst us here. Pumoto, as a striker, Sanele Barnes there. Uh, has, he, has he done anything wrong? No, I got well. I got well. I practice. I got. It was like a dive. I actually. Uh, it's not yeah, convincing. I convinced. So you don't have a problem with the dive? It's no, the dive technique. No, ma, ma, mela. <laughs> that is wrong. That's a ball. There's a way to do it. Yeah, I got that ball. The technique for the line move. No, I got boy looking. The technique of dive. I got is a man swimming pool. I got. I got cool enough for him to practice like a dive. I actually. Hang it. Picks up the yellow card. Simulation is the ruling on that occasion there, and. That could have easily been tremendously deflating to Richards Bay. But they bounced back over the weekend in a big game against Swallows. Yeah, what they did well against Swallows was they won, they won free kicks, 13 free kicks for themselves. So they rode, they rode tackles, you know, um, they, they gave them a little bit of time, particularly uh, Sanele Barnes and Figueredo. In this particular um, instance here, as well, I think Swallows were, were for the taking. Mm. Um, they were more on the front foot against Downs. They had 21% of the, of the ball. Um, in this instance, 53, so they competed very well with an XG of 0.84, you know, and here this was um, a great, a great finish. Kuda Muyaba finding the back of the net. He came on 27 minutes into the game. Nzundwana off very early. What a way to take your opportunity as a sub. I, I want to take it slightly into a different uh, page, Thomas, mm. and look at Swallows. Midweek, they play against Orlando Pirates. It's raining the whole evening. Mm the legs of the players. Um, Pirates have 70% of the ball position. You get tired more if you are running without the ball. Mm. And Solos had to do a lot of running without the ball in that midweek game. It means that when they get to the 80th minute, the legs are gone because you run the whole week midweek, you're still running the whole week over the weekend. And I think that game against Orlando Pirates took a lot of energy from Swallows. Mm. And that's why they couldn't cope in the last 10 minutes or so. And Richard Bay took advantage of that playing along. There's also that the issue of desperation, right? I mean, that is a great motivator. And Richards Bay absolutely needed the points more than Swallows. Um, the, the, the watershed moment was Mango scoring that last minute goal against Spurs, because mm. that then meant that it, Took was, the it was solely Richards Bay and Cape Town Spurs. Mm. You know, it's, it's basically, if, you, if it's the right way to say it, a two horse race to try and get out of trouble. What do you think of Richards Bay's run in to the end of the season? If they finish in the position they're in right now, they go to the playoffs. Uh, otherwise, if they finish bottom of the log, they'd be automatically relegated. This run in, is it one that keeps them alive? You know, that, that win against uh, Swallows is all important because they've got Chiefs up next who are desperate to bounce back. Chiefs mm. who haven't scored this uh, in the last three games. And then, of course, they want to, they want to get as far away Cup as final. possible uh, from Spurs before they meet. Then Amazulu, Pirates, Cape Town City, Stellenbosch. It is not an easy road. <laughs> it is not an easy road. If everybody's on form there, Richards Bay could struggle to get a huge number of points from that run-in. Very football, I ain't there for. Uh -huh. No, Mame, my, my, my football I ain't there for, Thomas. Because they beat Swallows, therefore they will beat Chiefs. And no, there's not there for. People are desperate for points. Mm. And I think the six-pointer is going to be Richards Bay versus Spurs. That will be a six-pointer because you gain, if you win the game, you gain the points and you take the other three points from the opponents. In that instance, that six-pointer is going to be key.
Let's move on to the midweek action here. That saw Orlando Pirates uh, playing against Swallows. Pomozo, you've already mentioned that encounter and how difficult that would have been on the legs. And we start out early, early on in the game with a goal that really rocks uh, what is going on at the Dobsonville Stadium. Everybody had an expectation that Pirates would probably walk this game. But then, Njali finds the net. Yeah, um, a terrible bubble before it gets to Trania. And uh, then CBC is watching the ball in the air all the way. I think if CBC had just chosen to scan in front of him and seen that Mshali was there, I think CBC would have put on the brakes and waited for Mshali to take his first touch. Ooh. And he would have been able to be in a position to now jockey or to take advantage of a bad touch. Instead, he watches the ball all the way. Here's the back pass. You see this terrible bubble. You can't really blame the keeper. He's watching the ball all the way. And he tries to get a challenge in when he shouldn't really be doing so. And then that's, of course, a great finish back across the keeper. And that uh, was what then gave Pirates a big job to do. They yeah. won down less than 30 minutes into the match. Yeah, I think um, the weather conditions are sometimes a factor in the result. And, and mm. we saw that in, in that in that moment that Matthew has just taken us through because that slight bounce just before it gets to China causes the goal. Now the goal comes, and the equaliser comes for Orlando Pirates. Libito is going to be key over the weekend and he's critical in this. But that equaliser, take us through how Pirates get back on level terms. I, I want to go to CBC because it's a team goal that they score. When we look at the telestration, you'll see that CBC starts the ball as one of the centre-backs. He progresses the ball into the midfield three. Look at the shape of Orlando Paris. That's the triangle of Orlando Paris in that midfield with Tamini, the man in position. I'm spiraling Levito in the wide area because he's going to notice that space. He wants to run into that space, but for him to get into that space, he did that delightful pass that is coming from Uzamini. The end of God is on Tito Maswangani. He's going to go on and score the goal in this moment. Orlando Paris go wide. Now, when you stop it there, look at the number of blue shirts that um, Solos has around the ball. It's eight blue shirts when you include the goalkeeper, it's nine. That cut back coming from Libito is excellent. The late run into the box that is being made by Tito Maswangani is excellent. So it says a lot about Orlando Pirates sinking them in into that midfield, taking the ball wide, the cut back from Libito, not just crossing for the matter of crossing, but the cut back to find Tito, he finishes an excellent goal. Spot on. Pirates fans said I should tell you that if Orlando Pirates do not make it to the Champions League, they're going to come back to this moment here and have a lot to say to uh, the refereeing team on this day. Because there's a goal that finds the back of the net, but isn't given for Orlando Pirates, and it all likelihood would have been a winning goal. No, look, these are the things that certain us as football people, as, as people who are refereeing practitioners, uh, when an assistant referee uh, is supposed to be taking the offside line and listening for that thump of the ball as it leaves the foot of the teammate. Because if you peel your eyes away from the offside line, that second last defender, and try to find the ball with your eyes, there's no way that you will be able to see what's happening here. Look at the moment the ball leaves the foot of the teammate, mm. you have a defender that's clearly closer to his own goal line than the attacker. Now, but because there's an assistant referee who waits there and looks at that moment, and not the moment when the ball is passed, he raises his flag for an offside, and in, in his heart of hearts, he believes that I raised the flag before the ball was kicked. Mm. So by the time the ball crossed the, the goal line in between the uprights under the crossbar, it was already given as an offside, but it was an incorrect call. Bottom line. He, he believes what? In his heart of hearts, he believes that uh. I raised the flag before uh. the ball was even kicked into goal. Mm. He, he believes, yeah, he, guys, he, I won't he, I. It's his belief. Oh, okay. He's convinced. I mean, I'm looking at the body language. Yeah. Uh, 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 oh, sure. Yeah. The, the body language tells me that this is, this is a confident decision mm. by the assistant referee, but confidently wrong. It's all about angles. We saw with the uh, younger Sundowns incident with the ball, the camera angles. It's, it's all about perspective. Mm. And it just takes one or two meters for a linesman to be, you know, not perpendicular to the last mm. uh, defender to give him a totally different perspective. Penalty appeal in the same game, Ace. There was a lot here for the officials to try and get right. Yeah, again, they, I think it's, it's something that referees must learn from. 
we always talk about positioning, anticipation, proximity to play. The referee expects there the ball to be cleared away. He starts to take a run in the direction where he anticipates that the goal will go to. But now what happens next is that the defense uh, uh, loses possession, loses possession, the ball falls quite favorably for a striker. The referee is nowhere close to the action to see that moment mm. when the player is fouled. He's too far, he's unsighted, doesn't have the correct angle, he doesn't have the, the power of proximity to play because his anticipation was that the ball would be cleared away. He was caught there, but that should have been awarded as a penalty. So, so far, just allowed goal, penalty. That went against the Orlando Pirates. I, I don't count things, I only dissect incidents. Are you counting? Counter it. Now I'll count. No, no, no. Lingeni, le pagad. Penalty. Penalty. Don't worry, you make, up for it. you make up for it in the next game. Let's watch the <laughs> no, next game. No, but points are gold. CBC picks up a red card, and this is one that I always don't understand, Is Red card for talking. For Okuluma, not for straight red. No, for not for talking. You, you can you can never have any referee, no matter how angry he is, so later, showing showing a red card to a player for remonstrating with him. Uh, At worst, the player will be shown a yellow card for for a dissent. Once a red card is shown and the mouth has been used, you must know it's it's for insulting language. Ah, but still, now yeah. look at the difference here. Look at two players that use insulting language. That one first uses insulting language and is walking towards the referee. Walking towards the referee. He's being confrontational. He's using insulting language. Walking to Look at this one. This one also uses That's insulting in language. Dondo. Dondo uses insulting language, but he uses it walking away from the match official. Look, see, I, I won't it's repeat what, what he says. Choice words, the same as the choice to words. The that, official. But you, you know what? Referees will understand that this is a game of emotions. You, you say your choice words and you're walking away. You say your choice words and you're confronting the referee. You will find yourself taking an early shower. No, but I thought officially when I saw PMP and No, the, the reason why the tolerance level of the fourth mm. official would have been mm. higher at that moment mm. is that whatever he's saying, he's saying and walking away. Mm. Also, who's busy must say it and go the other direction. Then I'm not saying like, him, they must eh? say it. Eh, I, I, I'm, saying, I, I, I'm saying the tolerance level yeah. of the referee yeah. will be higher when you are not directly uh. confronting him than when you are walking away. Ace, it's the 95th minute of the game. Passions are high. Penalties haven't gone the way of Orlando Pirates. Uh, a goal has been di disallowed. The emotion is very high in those players. They're not happy. And then a straight red card for mentioning that we're not happy. Uh, mentioning, you know, using insulting language. That's why I always say to players, show the referee your jersey. Uh, uh, during my time as a referee, I've had so many choice words thrown at me. Mm. And the only time I would show the red card was when you, you say that choice word, looking at me and coming for me directly. But if you walk away from me and you're throwing your arms and, you, and, you, and I can see your jersey number, I don't care. Go away. I'll, I'll, I'll mind my own say, language. Say, say, say it, CVC, and, and move away. Different I see, direction. I see Matthew's thinking, he has survived, man. Yeah, I used to use choice words a lot. <laughs> oh, my, 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 my trick was uh, learning Russian and using Russian. <laughs> so the referees didn't understand In South Africa before. <laughs> You're using Russian here. Even on the roads, when I'm driving on the roads as well, I'm using the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> when I've got kids in the car. That's smart. Nice. <laughs> We're going to a break. After the break, we'll uh, continue with the Orlando Pirates story after that result against Swallows where they got the draw and then the response over the weekend. Seven goals, arrows, the recipient of a resurgent Orlando Pirates. We'll talk about that afterwards. This is it. Get behind Banyana Banyana. They're 1-0 down against Nigeria, trying to get to the Olympic Games later this year. Let's get there. Let's get to the stadium. Be at Loftus Fersfeld for the encounter tomorrow at 7.30. And if you can't, 
Channel 204, right here on your World of Champions, will bring you all of that exhilarating Banyana Banyana versus Super Eagles of Nigeria action. Couldn't be bigger. And make sure that you get to the stadium if you can, right? Because they need you there, right? Yeah, get to the stadium. But now, speaking of stadiums, what took place uh, between Orlando Pirates and Bolden Arrows is going to go long in the memory of Orlando Pirates uh, um, supporters. Mabasa's hat-trick is the big story. I know that's where you want to start your focus, Pumuzo. Yeah, when you look at the goal that he scores first, it's, it's a team goal for me uh, because of the interchange of, of, of position from Orlando Pirates. Um, the ball that, that goes wide, it's Makaula that is having uh, the second last touch before Mavasa puts it in the back of the net. It's good to see the confidence of even a Makaula driving the team forward, having the ability and the confidence to have shots at goals. I think I've got to feel a little bit sorry for Nungwana because that was his probably only mistake which led to the first goal, which led to the further seven. But in actual fact, if it wasn't for him, the Pirates could very well have got into double figures here. Mm. You know, it could, we could have been actually seeing a rugby score here uh, from both both teams. Um, and, uh, you know, this service from the right-hand side from Lubitsa, I think, you know, this move with Moniani and Shandu um, and bringing in a guy like Lubitsa was very, very shrewd from Pirates' point of view. There it is, hat-trick hero for the night, number 19 for Orlando Pirates, 10 goals now this season. He joins Ribeiro on 10 goals, the Mamilori Sundowns marksman at the top of the goal scorer's charts. Take us to that first goal one more time. I think when you look at the first goal, Orlando Pirates play with a triangle in midfield. It's Miguel T, Makaula and Lamini. But Lamini is given the freedom to interchange positions with the Tito Maswangani. When you go to that moment, you'll be able to see the interchange of positions uh, from, from that midfield. I'm, I'm spiraling Lamini first. He's the man that is going to go on and interchange. That is how the triangle is facing down in this moment. Tito Maswangani interchanges position now. Look at Tito now as interchange position with Lamini. That is how the midfield three is looking in this moment. When you progress to the next level, look at um, Lamini. I'm spiraling him. He's going to move away way towards the ball to create that space for a, a Makaula to then move into that space. I'm spiraling that triangle now. The sharp point has changed. It's on top. Now, Makaula realizes that space, that is the space that we're speaking about, is, is the man that I'm going to spiral. He's going to drive the team forward. You don't anticipate that when you're playing against Orlando Pirates. The end of God is on Mavasa. He's going to anticipate. He's going to uh, wait for that ball to drop. As soon as it drops, he reacts the quickest, Thomas puts it in the back of the net. I love how Ribeiro has given them the freedom to interchange positions, the role of Lamini and also Tito. Excellent. Now, Matthew, you speak about it potentially could have been a rugby score uh, for Golden Arrows in this one. And I think if we focus in on one of the other good performances of Rilebo uh, Gile Mofogeng, that will illustrate that because the number of opportunities the young man got on a night where he was shining in that Orlando Paris jersey. Yeah, um, you know, he, he scores a fantastic goal and um, the reaction straight afterwards, it goes to Steve Compella. Mm. And you can tell exactly what he's complaining about because the Arrows defense, Lukele, Zuke, Shitolo, they were all playing a very high line. And like Pumuzo often says, even if it's a medium pressure, when you're not putting enough pressure on that ball carrier and you're playing too high, you're giving too much space, you're trying to catch them offside, you're going to be looking for trouble, especially against Pirates. You know, and this run from uh, Mofu Kim was very, very clever. Steve Compella, after that second goal, he said, he told them exactly that. Hey, watch behind you. You've got, you got to sharpen up. You can't be lazy. That's lazy defending. You've got to sit a little bit deeper and put more pressure on the ball carrier. Again, look at uh, how Mofu Kim was unplayable here. The assist for Jamini's goal is him. And this is actually, this looks like a simple goal, but it's not. This is a penalty in open play. What Lamini has done, he's put Mlungwana down on his on his bum. You know, Mlungwana is trying to double bluff him by going to the far post. Mm. Lamini's seen all of that and put it to the near post. It's actually a very good goal. Then this attempt at finish, outrageous from the young man. Excellent. For, for me, it's how he bends his run, the ability to stay on side, <sighs> the ability to keep his eye on the ball all the way even before the ball lands on the ground, he has connected with that ball. <coughs> this is one thing that um, the coach has improved in his game. It's, it's 
entry into the final into the final third. Is this entry into into the penalty area? He does everything that is taught. This you can see is coming with this from the development uh, stages because he goes across the goalkeeper. Some of the credit must go to uh, uh, Joseph Makanya. That coach him in the DDC to say when the angle is like that, you go across the goalkeeper. He does that so well. It comes off the upright and a good performance by the young man. But key is consistency. Can he do it game in, game out? That's the, that's the challenge that I'm throwing to the young man. Well, so far he has been very consistent for Orlando Pirates. And now we need to move on to the next encounter for you. A big result uh, away from home for TS Galaxy. Look at how they were able to uh, extract all three points from a Super Sport United team now who cannot buy a victory. Five draws and now a defeat in their last six games. Yeah, this, this build-up was actually quite quite strange because I'm sure that they were attempting uh, something from the training ground here, um, uh, which didn't quite work out. But they didn't they didn't panic. They rotated the ball, and that little ball in is is perfect. So people were much longer getting down at wide, and Velasse, who I've watched in awe from from Marumo Gallants, uh, getting to the right space. That's a that's a well worked goal. Another look at how this team game ha goal happens. Mbelasi finishes. TS Galaxy, the form they've been on right now is the kind of form that has now seen them go into the top eight and be become a real contender. And it starts at the back. Clean sheets in the last four games. I mean, what, what more can you, can you ask for? Mm. Now, let's go on to Cape Town City and Amazulu. They did get all of the points that Amazulu desperately needed points. It was helped by a red card, and Ace will talk about that very shortly, but let's talk about the goal. I, I love um, the energy that uh, Dion brought, the energy that Mulenga brought mm. off the bench, uh, because they give them the width forever running. That is Hannah Mob, mm. and I'm sure that Matthew has spotted something in, the, in that goal that he wants to take us through. Yeah, well, at this stage, when, when, they do, when they do score the goal, they've made a couple of changes, which were very shrewd from, from Franco and his mm. team. They brought on uh, uh, Dion, they brought on Mulenga. Um, here, uh, with Cupido off, they, they were playing generally with the back three, with Fischer, Van Heerden and Mkizia, which was a little bit unusual. Rhodes and Petrus were helping out at the back at this particular point, but in actual fact, Rhodes is, was playing as a, as a right wing back. Here they rotated out left, and Rhodes make a little bit mistake. They're fine there. There's nothing wrong with that, but Rhodes now makes a little bit mistake. Typical attacker, winger, trying to get out to the ball carrier without checking his his blind side out right, and that allows him too much space. He should really be in that position that we've marked out there. Mkise then has to, is forced to come out, he's too late, and then of course there's that sequence where a beautiful little ball in from Mulenga. Van Heerden miss, misses the header, Lutzwalo gets the header off, and Dion, super sub, they need to tap it in. They were able to do that also, helped by the fact that defensively, Cape Town City were one man short, eh? And it happens quite early in the game. How do they become a 10-man Cape Town City against the 11 of Amazon. Uh, a brilliant case of the application of the DDPP principle. Mm. Distance, direction, possession, proximity of defenders. <coughs> you look at uh, the uh, defender, they having lost possession of the ball. The attacker uh, sneaks in behind him. He's got possession, he's got direction, he's got... Uh, 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 possession of the ball and the proximity of the other defenders uh, is, is quite far away from him. And typical case of denying an obvious goal scoring opportunity. Look at the defender there. He's relaxed. He thinks that he's got the ball in control. The striker is behind him, tries to shield it, loses possession. And at that moment, you look at the attacker sneaking him behind him. The defender realizes that he's now in possession. He's got the correct direction towards goal and the proximity of his fellow defenders is such that they can't help him. What does he do? He brings him down. Typical case of a dog so. Denying an obvious goal scoring opportunity. That's what dog so stands for. Straight red card, off you go. Keanu Cupido. And at the end of the day, it would be a big red card that allowed for uh, Amazulu to then go on and profit from playing against uh, a 10 men side. The last game we're going to highlight is a five goal thriller. And it's even more exciting by virtue of the fact that Royal AM and Polokwane City was nil nil at half time. We see five goals in the second half. What a match. Oh, fantastic half time talks, clearly. <laughs> <laughs> it starts with Sedwin George for Royal AM. And then Polokwane City 
fight their way back and get into the lead as Douglas Bapfumo comes with a brace in three minutes. Yeah, First of the finishes. That's, that's what we saw in this game, the target man coming into play in that second half. And when you've got a target man in your team, he just wants the supply and you'll do the rest. Apolis with a delightful corner in that he says they deal with the first phase that is Real M, but the second phase they don't deal with it mm. and Mapuma finds his brace. Full of city and the, you can see the celebration. At this stage, Vaz goes, Ala, 2 1 up, Sele 15. <laughs> ah, some nine, ah, some nine. Then, dying moments of the game, Mabuza. He's the man who finishes. And at this stage, I'm sure everybody in the stadium is thinking, okay. 2-2, what a game, what a second half. It doesn't end like that because Royal AM find one last kick at goal under the eyes of Mama Joy as Zukile Mkize, 92nd minute winner. What a match. Yeah, how many times do we see this, you know? Um, it's the last kick of the game, basically, you know? Not being uh. able to, to man manage. I think the Letting them back in at 2-2, I think, just gave them, just gives teams so much more momentum. And it's a case of just managing the game better uh, from Polo Kwani. So there you go. What a match. What an encounter. What a five goals. You couldn't have scripted it. Five goals, second half. I don't know when we're ever going to see another match like that one between Royal AM and Polokwane City. That's what the DSTV Premiership is all about. This is what's coming up as far as the log standings are concerned. Sundowns with their victory, 10 points ahead of Stellenbosch. The battle for the Champions League is that one between Orlando Pirates, Kukuni and Stellenbosch. They're really the ones competing for second place right now. But just below them, TS Galaxy have thrown their names into the hat in terms of a couple of more results and they're in the conversation. Looking at the bottom half of the table, it's Cape Town Spurs. Now, five points back from Richards Bay after Richards Bay got that uh, remarkable victory and made sure of all three of the points against the team that's just above them there. Morocco Swallows on 25 points and they'll feel that they're well clear, 13 points away from automatic relegation at this stage. But can Richards Bay put a little bit of pressure and catch the teams above them? And you can see why Royal AM was celebrating because three points there took them just a little bit away from that battle at the bottom there. That's the DSTV Premiership and Ace. I'm going to give you the final word today on a day where you have been incredibly insightful. I see you wanting to stand up. What's happening? No, because, you know, we, we don't like breaking the hearts of anybody uh. on the show. So uh, what we're going to do here, we are going to score the goal for Younger. Oh, it's crossed the line. We're going to cross <laughs> it. It's right inside the, the net. Spicy, eh? Spicy, spicy. <laughs> That's it as far as the show is concerned. Thank you very much. This has been Extra Time. Good night. Ikorin.